Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to take a look at this 2022 Land Rover Defender S90. Huge shout out to Hendrick Lexus Northlake for providing this vehicle for me today. Make sure you guys check out their website. They have a huge selection of new and pre-owned inventory. That link is down in the description. The Defender that you see behind me is finished off in Santorini Black Metallic and they have a starting MSRP in the mid $50,000 range. And to start off today's review, we're going to take a look at what powers this specific Defender. There's three different engine options. This model has the two liter four cylinder turbocharged engine paired to the eight speed automatic transmission. It pumps out 296 horsepower around 5,500 RPM and 295 pound feet of torque around 1,500 RPM. This has the full-time four-wheel drive system. It weighs in right around 4,500 pounds. It'll do zero to 60 in 6.7 seconds with a top speed of 119 miles an hour. And it has a fuel capacity of 19.8 gallons. You'll expect to see around 18 miles per gallon in the city and 22 out on the highway. This has a wheelbase of 101.9. Its overall length is 180.4. It has a width of 79.1, a height of 77 and a half, its ground clearance is 11 and a half inches, and it also has an approach angle of 31.5, a breakover angle of 37.5, a departure angle of 24.2, and it can forward through 35.4 inches of water. As we move on to the exterior styling now for this Land Rover Defender, let's start off with the front end because it is very distinctive compared to other SUVs currently on the market. Defender is spelled out across the hood. Land Rover is surrounded by brushed aluminum that runs the length of the upper grille. And this even has LED headlights, DRLs, and turn signals with a square shape for that housing. Very unique to see. I love how the DRL surrounds the turn signals as well. And this even has a forward facing camera in the lower grille along with all the parking sensors. There's more brush trim going from fog light to fog light in the lower section with plenty of cutouts to provide cooling to this engine. There's even more cutouts just underneath the fog lights on both sides. And as you can tell, the lower section of the bumper is finished off in plastic just to give it more of a cool design as well as being off-road capable as well. You wouldn't want those to be a body colored. There's really nice lines running down the hood and these cool plastic trim pieces on each side just to give it more of that rugged design. As we move on to the side now, this has a set of 18 inch wheels with a five spoke design. Really nice against this exterior black color. Defender is spelled out with another functional trim piece in this front quarter panel. Really neat to see that. This has body colored side mirrors with the integrated turn signal and a camera. And for being the two door compared to the four door that is available, has a really nice design. Very short in its proportion, obviously, but it blends together nicely. This particular model also has the storage bin on the passenger side. You can open that up and put in some smaller items, maybe some tools or whatever equipment you may have to take this off the pavement. And it even has the optional roof rack which can hold right around 176 pounds. I believe that is just for the cargo. You could probably put a rooftop tent on that as well. And there's even a collapsible ladder on the driver's side, giving you better access to the roof. And now in the rear of this Defender, this has a full-size spare. The integrated third brake light is on the top of the glass, and the wiper blade is actually hidden behind the tire too. So that gives you better visibility, especially with that full-size spare. This even has LED tail lights with that square design like you saw up front, and the reverse lights are on the outer section. And even with the shorter wheelbase being the two-door, this still has a maximum towing capacity of 7,700 pounds. Very impressive for that two-liter four-cylinder engine. The backup camera is also nicely placed up underneath the spare tire, as well as having all the parking sensors. More of that brush trim piece right in the middle to tie it in nicely with the front-end design. So that's a look at the exterior for this Defender. Let's move on to the rear cargo. So we do have this lift gate that will swing open. There is a button on the backside where you can unlock this when you walk up to it. And even with that full size spare, it's very lightweight to open. This has a giant shock underneath it. So that definitely helps. You can see Defender is spelled out and there's a little bit of storage space in this door. So it makes it very usable. There's even a grab handle too, to help you close it if needed. And for being the two-doored, not a whole lot of space behind the back seats, but it's pretty functional to put in groceries. My camera gear fit in here fine. You do have a little bit of room. Now you can fold these back seats down. They have a 40-20-40 split, making this a lot more usable for the short size that it has to offer. And this particular model has a really solid floor liner to it. It's even on the back of the seat. So when you fold those down, it gives them added protection. There's a hook on one side 
Over on the passenger side, there's another hook as well as the dome lights, even some tie down hooks. And when I lift up the floor, you can gain access to the tool for the spare tire kit as well as the tow hook. There's a 12 volt over on that driver's side too. So definitely plenty of room. And like I mentioned, with that shock for this swing gate, it is very lightweight and easy to close. And now let's move on to the back seats. But first we'll take a look at the driver door panel. Now to lock and unlock this vehicle, simply just push on that button and you will see the power folding mirrors unfold as I unlock it. The door panel has a really cool rugged design to it with all these materials that are going to withstand taking this off the pavement. All the screws are exposed just to give it more of that old school design for this modern vehicle. This has the 11 speaker Meridian sound system, all the window controls, the side mirror adjustments, even the blind spot. There's the release handle and a good amount of storage in the lower section of the door. So a really cool design, all that materials on the upper section too. And these seats have a really nice black leather design to them with all the perforations running down the insert as well as the stitching. And these are manual adjusting seats. So we have recline and incline as well as this bar to slide the seat forwards and backwards. And now making our way to the back seats, all I need to do is pull on this tab. I can move the seat forwards and then give it a good push. That gives me a lot of access at five foot 10 to make my way into these back seats. Now you can fit three people in the back of this. So that makes it very capable. There are two air vents right in the middle as well all the climate adjustments there's usbs usb c's 12 volts and all of those controls so your backseat passengers can have a lot of comfort being in the back now obviously i have that seat all the way forwards as i can't move it back but even with this seat over here plenty of room for your legs and at five foot ten i even have a few inches above my head now these seats don't recline but this is a pretty comfortable seat i could enjoy being in the back of this it's very spacious for the two-door model there's a grab handle even a little bit of storage massive window so you won't feel claustrophobic there's even the safari window up in the roof so you can use that to get in some light Really cool to see that on both sides. Now with that storage box there, there's a little bit of a blind spot having that, but that is optional and it's a really nice interior. I love how you can hook up tablets in the back, even charge them too. And we have the full moon roof. So you can definitely get in a lot more light for this interior. It is so roomy for being the two door model. And then hopping into these front seats, it is a little bit high, but it's not that bad for a vehicle like this. The door opens very wide as well. And then the steering wheel is covered in solid black leather. We have more of that rugged style design with this two-tone look. I really like the spokes that come off of each side as well. And as you can tell, there are no controls on both sides. They are hidden when the vehicle is turned off. So let's turn this on with my foot on the brake. That button is over on the right side and we can bring all the electronics to life. And looking at this gauge cluster now, over on the left side is the speedometer as well as the fuel gauge. On the right side is the tack and the engine temperature. And then you can go through a lot more information right in the middle by using these buttons over on the left side of the steering wheel, where currently you can see voice commands as well as Bluetooth controls. There's even a customizable button and volume for the radio. On this right side is the heated steering wheel as well as cruise control and the lane keeping assist. Now on this left side, if I push on the circle right in the middle, it will bring up the arrows to where we can go through all this info now so currently it's showing display if i go into the layout you can actually configure this to show one dial as you can see there's currently two it will shift the tack to the middle and now you can see the navigation over on that right side if you want to bring that up in a fuller screen you can even go to the full map so it's pretty cool just depending on what you like to go through you can even go into the driver assistance as well now if i scroll back and go to layout again we can go into the off-road information and you can actually have that on or off just depending on if you'd like to see it if I scroll over to the right one more time, we are back to that vehicle information. So not a whole lot of info, but it's nice that you can go through what's available. Over on this left side is the electronic parking brake as well as a dimmer switch for the gauges. There's a little bit of storage on this left side, which is great to see. And I love the trim piece just above the gauge cluster. It makes its way all the way over to the passenger side as well as going up underneath the screen too where right in the middle we have this 11 inch screen where you can go through a ton of information. So as you can tell, there's navigation, phone, media. I can swipe over, look at the slope assistance. So that's basically your pitch. There's a compass, you have wheel information. You can go through the locking diff, even the weight sensing. So you can turn that on to see where the level of water is. So that way you're not going too deep, obviously. There's energy, driving style, a lot of info to go through. On this left side, we can quickly pull up the navigation. There's even your phone when you have that paired. 
we can pull up the music. Now behind the screen, as you can tell, there's a storage shelf on this passenger side with the fender and a USB-C. It actually goes behind that screen, so you can store items back there. There's a little bit of space on this one side. So it's cool how you can put in a lot of items in that storage shelf, and there's a decent sized lip, so nothing will fall out. But if we come back to the screen, over on this right side, there's a settings button that I can push on. You can go through some more of this info just depending on what you'd like to see and quickly get to the 3D camera system. If I push on these arrows, you can go around this vehicle. Interesting, I'm pushing on the right arrow and we are going left, but it's pretty cool how we have this graphics. Even going off-road, this will give you a lot of visibility, so that way you don't really need a spotter as you can go through all that info. And then you can go to a certain camera angles just by pushing on all of these. If I click on off-road now, we have a little bit different of an angle. If I push on that icon, you can actually see where the wheels are and if anything is in your way. So as I turn them right now, pretty awesome to see that for this off-road vehicle. You can quickly lock and unlock the diff. And then working our way below that, to put this vehicle into reverse, the trigger's on the front. If I push it forwards, that's for reverse. So you'll see this angle pop up. And then park is on the top. You can even use this to shift if needed. And then we have all the climate controls nicely laid out. In the upper section, however, there's the downhill assist control as well as the engine start stop. We have the defrosters, where you'd like the air to go. And both of these dials are multifunctional. So currently you can see the temperature being adjusted. If I push on this, now we can adjust the heated seats. Cooled seats is an option, which this vehicle doesn't have. And then right in the middle, pushing on the upper button, now we can use this dial to go through the different driving settings. So on the far right is rock crawl. There's even sand. We have mud and rust. There's grass, gravel, and snow, comfort, and eco. So mainly two different modes for on-road and four for off-road. The lower one, if you push on that, now we have the fan speed. If I unclick on that, we are back to the temperature and the seats. Underneath that is traction control as well as a low range setting. And then we have some other AC controls. Below that, there is a lot of storage. As you can tell, it goes to this lower shelf. So you have plenty of room as well as having a 12 volt USB, USB-C, two cup holders right in the middle. There's a wireless charging pad. And if I open this up, plenty of room for any items that you need to place in here. I believe that you could get the option of having this as a cooler, which of course this does not have, but I have seen that in some other models. And over on the passenger side, we have the glove box up underneath as well as that storage space that I previously showed. We'll take one last look at this interior. Very, very spacious for being the two-door. Now up in the roof, we do have the sunglass holder as well as being able to open the sunshade and the sunroof. As you can tell with the roof rack, we can see that through there, provides a lot more light. There's also some call buttons up top as well and then the garage door buttons up underneath the rear view mirror. All right, so now that we are behind the wheel of this 2022 uh, Land Rover Defender, this is the second Defender that I've been able to drive. I've been able to check out the four-door version. Now we're behind the wheel of the two-door version. And I will say I have a lot more experience with the Ford Bronco, which is a competitor having a four-door and a two-door model both available and to be able to take these off-road. The Land Rover is just a lot more luxurious, obviously for the price point from Land Rover, you're getting a lot more of those technology features. But with this out on the road, it drives very, very smooth. I am thoroughly impressed with this interior amount of space as well. For only having two doors, this is very spacious. Five people could easily be on the inside of this. And I really, really wish that I could take this off the pavement and really utilize these off-road uh, settings because there are a lot more for off-road than there are for on-road. And with that said, I'll have some Bronco videos down below. If you'd like to see something that's very similar, we were able to take those off-road and really test them. So just for my experience, I'm using that as a competitor for me since I can only drive this on the pavement today. I think this would be a very, very capable off-roading vehicle with everything that it has. It's very, very quiet and comfortable. I could see this being a great daily driver and you sit so high up. We do have an adjustment on the side where I can lower the seat if I need to. And we'll give it a little bit of gas now. And it gets up and moves. It's pretty cool to see that there are three different engine options for this Defender. And with the engine that this model has, its towing is very, very surprising. For the short wheelbase, if you look on Land Rover's website, the two liter can tow around 7,700. We have the three liter, which is close to 8,000. And then the five liter V8 is well over 8,000 pounds. That is very, very impressive. If you need a smaller vehicle like this, you're not sacrificing anything for towing, for off-road. 
there's advantages and disadvantages to a four-door versus a two-door off-road, but you can still take this off the pavement and use it as a utility vehicle. And for it being an SUV like this, it's pretty tall. It took that turn with ease going the speed that I was going and we can easily get back up and moving. And now as we switch over to the POV angle behind the wheel of this Defender, hopefully you can tell how high we are from this angle. I love the front windshield, has a great rake to it and you just have a good amount of visibility out of this front half. Now I will say, like I mentioned earlier, over the right shoulder, a little bit of a blind spot with that cargo compartment on the side, but that is an option, so you can take that off. Over this left side, I can see out of that window. So visibility is really good. It's so open feeling for how compact this vehicle is. And the technology is really nice. I love all of the information that you can go through and it's just a quiet, smooth driving vehicle. For a hardcore off-roader like the Defender, you can absolutely daily drive this and be super comfortable. There's a few other options that you can get, like the ventilated seats, as I mentioned, just to give you all those creature comforts for out on the pavement. Let's face it, this is going to see the pavement a lot. And with a light acceleration, we're up to speed, plenty of power for this engine. And we'll do one last acceleration for today's video. I am very impressed with how peppy this engine is. And we are up to speed just like that. Very impressive for the smaller engine option available. It's going to be a little bit more eco-friendly as well. So it's pretty cool, just depending on your budget, which engine option you want, and if you want the four-doored or the two-doored for your Land Rover Defender. But that's gonna wrap it up for today's video. Huge thanks to Hendrick Lexus Northlake for providing this rugged SUV for me today. Check out their website, that link is down in the description. If you enjoyed today's video, give it a huge thumbs up and consider smashing that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out on our daily uploads. I will see you all in the next video.